gentlemen, welcome to Azeroth Daily for the 19th of April 2011. My name is Total Biscuit, I'm bringing you your daily dose of WoW news and comments. In the headlines today, the latest dev water cooler called Critical Hits and Misses has been released, and this has been written by the one and only Greg Street, aka Ghost Crawler, who has managed to misspell his name in his own article. Apparently, he is now Ghost Controller which is intriguing. I have to wonder if he'll adopt that name permanently. Whatever the case, this is about all sorts of different things, really, and we're looking at things like critical hits, homogenization, big numbers, massive, massive variety of information available in this particular article, and I would recommend going and have a good read of it, because as usual, Ghost Crawler's articles are always interesting, if not a little bit rage-inducing. The remote chat function of the World of Warcraft Armory app has now been released and is also open for a free preview that will allow you to chat to members of your guild. Now, once that's expired, you will need to subscribe to World of Warcraft Remote, which currently, I believe, costs three extra dollars a month in order to make that happen. However, there are reports that, one, it's currently not available on Android yet, and that's confirmed by the fact that there's no download link on this page, and two, it barely works on any realms whatsoever. Only a few US realms currently have this enabled. So overall, not exactly the strongest launch I've ever seen for a service like this, so I suppose it's a good job that they're having a free preview period. If anyone was actually paying for something that barely functioned, then they would be a little bit annoyed. The subject for Ask the Devs number 6 has been released, and the thread has now been voted on and locked, so you can expect answers from this very shortly, and it's going to be on the subject of guild advancement. Bear in mind that you cannot vote on these anymore, there was a very short time window in which you can actually do that, and they will be bringing out the answers shortly, and once they do, I will provide you with a link in Azeroth Daily. BB of MMO Champion is speculating that there is a decent probability of seeing patch 4.1 next week. Obviously, it will not be out this week. Bear in mind that this is speculation, so there is a possibility it will not happen. So don't go and yell at BB if it happens to be wrong this time around. He has been known to be wrong before. But I'll keep you posted if any more information happens to come our way. And with that, it's time for the... No, it's not. And you want to know why it's not time for the Daily Blues? Because my researcher was sitting around all day waiting for the Battle.net forums to come back up with the maintenance. They didn't. And there is nothing worthwhile. And by the time you reach the cutoff point, it's like, well, there's nothing to say about the Daily Blues. So there will be no Daily Blues today, but I will throw in an extra mailbox just to try and make up for that. And of course, if anything interesting is actually said that we haven't already covered in the news, then that will be covered tomorrow. So with that, it's time for your Daily Grind. Now, this quest is one that was actually brought in in Wrath of the Lich King, and it's a Horde version of the Clock Quest. Now, this is a little bit different to the one on the Alliance side, and this will allow you to gain access to a Westfall Chicken. What you need to do is head over to Brill, grab some special feed right here from this vendor, then find a nearby chicken. Set a macro up so that you can clock at a chicken and keep doing so until it turns green so that you can actually talk to it. Once you do that, you feed it some food, Follow the instructions on the screen, and you will unlock an egg. This egg will drop on the ground, you click on that, and hey presto, you will gain a new non-combat pet. A lot of people don't even know that this is here, since it used to be an Alliance exclusive quest to be found only in Westfall. Now it is also available to the Horde as of Wrath, and it is nearby in Brill. So if you want to go and pick that up, then by all means. And with that, it's time for your weekly feature. This is the Achievement Hog. We're going to continue on with the subject of the Glory of the Cataclysm Hero Meta Achievement, which requires a large number of different achievements, and you will receive the Reigns of the Volcanic Stone Drake if you're able to complete this. And the first one will be Prince of Tides. This requires you to defeat an unyielding behemoth while you have the Tidal Surge effect during the Ozomat encounter. Now, those of you who are familiar with the terminology will also be aware that the Tidal Surge effect is what happens in Phase 3 when you get all big and scary. So, the unyielding behemoth will need to be kited around until the last phase of the encounter. There are a few tips I can give you here which will actually help you out. Now, the best thing you can do is make sure that you mark one of them so that he doesn't get killed. You only need to have one. So you don't need to keep up any more than that. Make sure that the tank hits it a few times in order to build threat. And then you need to kite it around in phase one or two, along with all of those nasty, unpleasant beasties that spawn. Now, it doesn't move all that slowly. 
However, there are a few things that you can bear in mind in order to keep your tank alive. One, it will spray ink from time to time, so the tank will be able to use that time in order to get some distance. Secondly, you can also watch it levitate and AoE, so when that happens, you will get a chance to run away as well and also gain some distance. Although, bear in mind that there is a possibility the tank may start to lose threat if he doesn't hit it from time to time. So it's a little bit tricky, but with good healing gear and a solid tank that's able to kite, you shouldn't have all that many problems getting this done. And as soon as phase three starts, immediately focus it and kill it, and that will get you the achievement. Also, you do not actually have to beat the boss in order to get this achievement. Yes, I kid ye not. You can just Get to phase three, kill it, and then wipe if you like. But really, you shouldn't need to wipe once you get to that phase anyway. The next heroic achievement we're going to be having a look at is Ascendant Descending. This requires you to defeat Ascendant Lord Obsidius without any party reaching four stacks of the ridiculously titled Crepuscular Veil. Yes, I have no idea what that means either. But whatever the case, this is fairly simple, honestly. The Veil debuff is what comes from the ads. It's that minus healing debuff that comes in every stack. So what you have to do is simply rotate the tanking of the ads by using the DPS. And bear in mind, Veil actually only lasts for four seconds. So it's going to drop off very, very quickly. Just bear in mind that the boss does do a switch with the ads, so the tank's going to have to be absolutely prepared, as will the guy who is stacking the debuffs, in order to pick up once the boss has done his switch as quickly as possible, because it's very easy, and I do mean very easy to screw this up, considering you can't have any of your party members actually gain more than four stacks. So you got to be really, really careful. But since it ticks off so fast, as long as you're nice and coordinated, you shouldn't have any problems with this one. Now, the last one I'm going to be covering today is also in the Blackrock Caverns, and this is in regards to Karsh Steelbender. It's called Too Hot to Handle, and what you need to do is defeat him after he has reached 15 stacks of superheated Quicksilver armor. This is not particularly hard either, you just need to know how to do it. So, there's a couple of ways to execute this, and one of the most popular strategies is to nuke him down to a fairly low amount of health, then stop your DPS, and then allow the tank to actually get 15 stacks. Here's the thing though, it's not advisable to just sit there and get all of the 15 stacks in one go, because it's going to make healing the group very difficult, the AoE is going to get stronger and stronger. So, what you really need to do here is to simply dance in and out of the fire. So have your tank kite him in there, get two or three stacks, get him out of there, heal the group up, do it again, and make sure that he gets all 15. So the AoE will be much easier to deal with in that regard. So I wouldn't be too concerned about it. It's not as hard as it would appear, and you should be able to clear that one up nice and easy as long as you've got just a little bit of patience. Just remember, though, don't be too patient because the debuff will actually only last for around 15 seconds, so you can't take too long to get everyone back into a good state. But as long as you get him down really, really low, then do the stacking and then just kill him, you should be absolutely fine. Now, with that, it's time for the mailbox, folks. This one comes in from Anonymous, who says, Hey, TP, big fan, and I'm loving your show. I recently leveled a Majolt, and I'm in the process of gearing him ready for some casual raiding with my guild. I'm doing whatever I can to get some decent gear together, which consists of doing the Tolbarad dailies, buying some epic cloth gear, and collecting some archaeology items. This is all fine, but of course I also need to grind heroics. Although heroics can get quite repetitive, I still do find them quite fun. The problem I have is that most people have already gone past the stage of farming heroics for gear, and now only do it for daily points. I have no problem with this, as the runs usually go rather smoothly and quick, but almost every dungeon has at least one skippable boss, and this is extremely irritating, as about 90% of the time we skip one or two bosses. I understand this as sometimes you just want to take the quick option for easy rewards, but this is making gearing a really slow process. I'm not even sure why Blizzard has made this possible, and in my opinion you should not receive rewards unless all bosses have been defeated. What are your views on this? Do you think Blizzard should give the option to skip certain bosses? That is a really tough one, and you want to know why it's a really tough one? Because you're talking about taking choice out of the hands of the players, and that I always disagree with under pretty much every circumstance. So you get into a situation where you say, well, you have to do all the bosses. And it's like, well, no, that's not reasonable. You're putting in this arbitrary limitation within the game that wasn't previously there. I think the real problem is that it's a min-max situation. And people believe that they can get the maximum reward from just skipping those bosses. Here's the thing. They are there for the points. Yeah? And 
when it comes to the daily dungeons, they are there for those ridiculous points they really don't deserve. But whatever the case, the game says so, so you can't really blame the players for taking advantage of it. Talking about getting the Valor points from there. And they want to do that in the most efficient way possible, which is totally understandable. However, what I would say is that they should actually scale the reward. Bearing in mind they're not using badges anymore, they're using points, so they actually have a lot more flexibility in terms of how many points they give you they should scale that points reward at the end depending on how many bosses you've killed so then at least there would be an incentive to clear out all the bosses and that helps gear people better because of course if you're missing out on bosses you're missing out on items you're missing out on badges that you might need as well for actually getting your gear together as opposed to the badges that will get you raid level gear i.e the valor badges so that would be my suggestion implement scaling rewards based on how many bosses you kill but don't ever say you must kill all the bosses i don't think that's reasonable you should always always use the carrot and not the stick whenever possible and never take away the individual choice of the player this one comes in from cat shift who says the question is in regards to blizzard's reason for giving players a lot more hit points both as they ding to levels 81 to 85 as well as on the items this idea only makes sense to me because of pvp and the burst damage in previous expansions i can't imagine the problem being on the pve side of the game they could just nerf the damage output from mobs if they wanted i started playing in tbc so i don't really know how the situation was in vanilla but i can picture mages dying from two backstabs in tbc most good geared players had 12 to 14 khp and full brutal and in wrath 30 to 34 khp and full wrathful which obviously was too little when some players were simply on crack with their damage now in cataclysm most players with full vicious have 130 to 135 khp and fights do last longer but not that much Sure, players will get more resilience in the next season, but better weapons and items for DPS will still be there, so the difference in the total fight time of the fight will be very little. Not to mention players who have dinged 85 and want to gear up. I'm not even in full vicious, but when I see players losing 30% HP after one shred, I tend to stick on that player. Not because it's an easier challenge, but because it's free honor. The point is, I don't see any clear visible success in Blizzard's plan to increase players' HP. What's your view on that? Well, I don't PvP, so my view on that's going to be fairly limited, but I can talk about the philosophy behind it, which, as far as I could tell, was to prevent people going down to massive burst DPS. Now, if this is actually not happening, then that's a clear flaw with Blizzard's philosophy, but I then have to go on and say, well, was it the right philosophy to begin with? Is it okay to try and elongate fights? Now, there is an argument between PvPers and pretty much everybody as to whether or not it's a good thing. There is one side that says, well, it is a good thing, because it's more skillful to have a longer fight where there's more variables in play and where you have to focus for longer. And then other people say, well, it's not as skillful because they've kind of dumbed it down, they've spread out the fight, they've made it slower, it doesn't require as quick reaction times as it used to, so therefore it is easier and it is bad. It's a really hard thing to call, honestly. It really, really is, because I can see the merit of both arguments. But, as you're saying, if you can take someone down by 30% HP in one shred, and I have no idea if that's the case because I don't PvP, that seems fairly ridiculous, and that's the kind of burst damage that I would have thought they were trying to avoid. So, perhaps you're right, maybe they have failed in that. Now, one extra, just to replace the fact that we didn't have a blues today, this one comes in from Mr. Wilson, who says, I started playing WoW over the last couple of years, and I enjoyed it for quite a while. Like many WoW players I know, I buy the two-month time card, so I don't need to worry about not having the money to play. No money, no time card, easy as that. But over the last few weeks, I've been thinking about picking it back up more and more. I have a time card, but I'm kind of wary to use it. I do not have Cataclysm yet, and I've not done much in Wrath, as I only had it for three weeks before my subscription ran out. So my question is, should I go back to WoW now, or wait until I have Cataclysm to pick up playing again. It depends whether or not you have active characters. You can start playing again right now, and you can do the 1-60 to 60 content, and you will find that very enjoyable. That's assuming that you want to roll an ult, or your guys were low level to begin with, since I don't know what level your main is. If your main has not done a lot of Wrath content, then... I don't know, it's difficult to say, because Wrath content is not all that amazing, but it's okay. Did you get to level cap? If you got to level cap, then there's no real point in picking it up again until you have Cataclysm, because you're not going to have access to all of the new stuff. So that's not good for you at all. You're going to want to get into Hyjal and stuff like that. Good luck. You're not going to be able to do that, because, of course, you do not have Cataclysm. There is a lot of really, really good content available, but that's the simple answer to that, really. If you want to roll alts, then sure. Resub now. No problem. You will gain a lot of enjoyment i think out of the 1 to 60 brand new questing content if you have a guy that's at level cap 
Probably not. And obviously, if you wanted to roll a Worgen or a Goblin, and you should really do that at least once to experience their questing content, because it is absolutely superb, then I would wait until you get Cataclysm before dropping that time card. Okay, folks, that's me done for the day. Thank you very much for watching Azeroth Daily. Sorry it's a little bit late today. I've been extremely busy with IPL casting and a whole bunch of other stuff, and I've got a lot of things to finish before I go down to the I-42. Remember, if any of you are going to the Insomnia 42 LAN, down in Newbury this weekend, I will be there casting StarCraft 2, and I'll also be there gaming and talking to people. So if you do want to meet up, then there is an event on the Facebook page. Feel free to sign up to that, and I will try and have a word with you when we are down there. Should be a lot of fun. Looking forward to it. Okay, folks, I shall see you next time.